I'm recording this from Leander, Texas. It's around 5.30 p.m. in the evening. It's a bit late. I was working on the data that I collected and also I've been researching on several things about the Comet 3 Atlas. It's quite interesting. I wanted to share all those things with you. Uh, please subscribe to my channel to get the notifications. So click on the notifications too. So the question that I had in mind was how big Comet 3i Atlas is going to appear by the time like we can see that on December 19th. Whether we can see them with the telescopes, binoculars or naked eye, that's not really the question that I had in mind. My question was how big it is going to get and how bright it is going to get. David, who took the picture uh, using the Hubble telescope of the Comet 3 Atlas, from his understanding that this should be below, the nucleus should be below 5.6 kilometers. If the diameter was bigger than about five and a half kilometers or something, then it would make a bump in the middle of the image that we would see, a brightness bump. And we don't see that brightness bump corresponding to the nucleus. Therefore, the nucleus must be smaller than five and a half kilometers. But his, immediately he says that, well, that is only for the portion that is bright. If there are darker portions on the comet that are not bright, we may not be able to measure the size accurately. That's what he says. Uh, NASA, obviously, you heard the statement, they were uncertain on the size. The size of the nucleus still has yet to be pinned down. The best data are still from the Hubble observations that uh, Sean was talking about. So we're still right now in that range of somewhere in the vicinity of a um, couple of thousand feet to a couple of miles diameter, but we'll, we'll get better on that one. But they did left a clue in the presentation there in the press release. So the MRO, the Mars Reconnaissance Arbiter that took this picture, the sensor of that MRO is so big. So when it is pointed to the sky to take pictures of this comet, it's like you taking picture of uh, Mars using your cell phone. Your cell phone, when you point to the sky, you have a much bigger field of view, right? You can see the trees, you can see the sky, everything, right? It's similar kind of feeling when you are placing this arbiter sensor towards the sky and asking you to take a picture because it's designed for Mars surface, not for sky. And it is going to appear like one dot, like one pixel on the sensor. Uh, they developed a beautiful picture out of it, which is really great. There are two questions that I had in mind. Why did NASA chose to put that picture out there, which is decent size looking, and then they put this 1,500 kilometers, I believe, like 1,000 miles, uh, roughly, uh, the picture out there. So that's the coma of the... Comet 3 Atlas, including the nucleus. That's what I thought. And immediately, there was another scientist that said, well, coma was throughout the sensor on the camera. So I was thinking, if I point my, t my cell phone to the sky and take a picture of Mars, which is like, let's, it's not really a tiny dot. It will be taking more than two, three pixels if it is Mars. But let's assume for now, that's what it is. But if the entire cell phone camera sensor, if the entire cell phone camera sensor has the coma, how big of the object am I looking in the sky, right? So that's one of the interesting thought process. The other one I was thinking was, well, this is coming to us without any tail. I think it's very clear now. And it has some coma around it. Most of the coma is maybe the recent, recently it went through the uh, near the sun, maybe that's the coma, right? Um, so when it comes near the earth with our telescopes, when we see it, it's almost like a planet kind of looking, not the size of the planet, maybe not even the size of the moon, maybe a smaller moon. 
but definitely not like taking pictures of a comet. So I was doing various ways to take the pictures. I am hitting some snags when I'm changing the configuration to uh, start thinking this almost differently. Uh, how do we understand how big is the surface? How does it look? Uh, so there are a bunch of questions we all have. So I do wanted to check all that. So I took some pictures and uh, I have the data. I'm going to process the data and show you. Uh, please do click on the subscribe button and notifications. Uh, there are a lot of people watching the videos without subscribing. So please do click on the subscribe button. So you get notification when you wanted to watch the new video on Comet 3 Atlas or any other astronomy subject. Let I'm just showing you literally the capture data from the morning. So this is not even colored at this moment. It is just black and white. And see how bright the comet is compared to the stars around. You see that? This is not how much brightness it has got just two days ago. Two days ago, this was probably three-fourths of this size. It just completed processing it. So we are going to take a look at the color pictures now. Let's close this out. Bring the color picture once. Take a look at that one, guys. Are you looking at it? Right? Just look at how much bright it is looking at. And look at the color composition, right? You can clearly see it is showing like pretty much the green hue on the comet and it is looking brighter and brighter than any other star around it, right? So all we are doing is uh, go ahead and ask it to remove the noise. It's going to remove that color noise uh, everything else, right? So at least we wanted to see the smooth comet moving and also how does it look? So I'm going to load the pictures after the noise is completed. So these are the pictures after the noise is removed from the pictures. So these should be relatively clean uh, files compared to what we are dealing with. It still has some some dust and other stuff, but some of the noise was removed from these pictures. I think we should be good enough to deal with these pictures for now. So I'm going to zoom in further. So obviously you can still see the spin of the rotation it's going at an enormous speed also the camera and the size of the telescope is different this is taken with rasa 8 not with the rasa 11 rasa 8 um, zooms out a little bit and the rasa 11 zooms in so you here you are seeing a little bit of a wider shot I'm actually going a bit more closer than this. Uh, it's going to be a very big comet by the time we are going to see it on December 19th. Uh, they keep talking about all sorts of things, but my uh, guesswork at this moment is the coma, the Irrespective of the size of the coma, the comet itself might look bright. If it loses all that coma, it's actually more scarier because it's going to look like a big dark kind of thing. Hopefully we can actually see it, but it go, it's going to look like a planet, right? So right now we are looking through the brightness. If that brightness reduces a lot, let's try that out and see how 
we can see it let me just undo the brightness on this or oh, not this small i didn't realize brightness okay let's see it okay so this is like zero brightness right now oh we can't even see anything Do you see it? If it loses all its brightness, that's what we might end up seeing it. Um I have to zoom in and I hope what I'm showing is visible on the cell phone cameras. I'll try to zoom in again. as much as i can so that's what you will see that's the almost like a nucleus of no no tail nothing right but if i put the brightness on it not this bright yeah i mean if i put the brightness on it it is going to sh uh, show up with everything like all the dust everything else is coming up in between some sometimes the green is coming because of the clouds but i have to process these pictures more to actually just bring the the core out of this comet i will do that in the future videos but that's all i have for today uh, please subscribe to my channel and click on the notifications button so you get whenever i post these videos a notification whether it's comet 3a atlas or any other astronomy videos thank you for watching